Okay, hey everybody, welcome to another episode of On The Rest From Off The Cuff. Today we are actually shooting a subsection of that, uh, which has been affectionately titled Wrist Watch Rambles and Rants. And it's actually brought to you guys by uh, channel sponsor Wrist Candy Watch Club. Um, so you can see their information there. Uh, so a little quick plug for them. So Wrist Candy Watch Club, essentially, they provide uh, everything from really cool kind of entry-level NATOs as you can see here with very unique hardware that actually is rounded off uh, similar to almost like the RAF style uh, hardware um, that you'll see on other types of straps uh, very nice you know not luxury style definitely more tool oriented uh, the nice thing is that that keeps it very much on the affordable side they have everything from uh, basic NATOs to really nice purlons to these really cool combination straps here that you can see which actually uh, kind of combine uh, very nice supple leathers with uh, a layer of canvas material which is really cool. Um, so they even have uh, leather options. So Wrist Candy Watch Club, um, are the sponsors of this video segment, so big thanks to them. Uh, go ahead and follow links below if you're looking for more info. Thanks guys Okay, now for today's segment uh, That we'll jump into pretty quickly here. I want to talk about Why size doesn't matter as much as you think uh, In regards to watches, okay guys uh, keeping it PG here, so in regards to watches, I think there's I've, something I've, I've really, really noticed, um, you know, from the comments section and then even, you know, within watch forums and Facebook groups is that a lot of people really live and die by the millimeter. And this is something that it just it kills me to see people missing out on opportunities because they're not taking into account so many other uh, really important features and um really proportions when you're looking at a watch and you just think it's a huge watch you just you look at it and you say this is huge and I always see the comments if only they made this in the 38 or if only that wasn't a 42 if it was a 41 or a 40 excuse me uh, it, it would just be uh, it, it'd be on the money I'd buy it right now so with that said, I have actually a couple of uh, watches here. Some uh, have been reviewed on the channel, like the DS30, uh, while others are still to be reviewed on the channel. Um, so this is a little sneak preview for you. Um, so you see the Boulder Expedition there, and then of course the Archimedes Outdoor uh, 41 Anti-Magnetic. So all of these kind of uh, have in common is that they are tool watches, and they are overbuilt, and they're meant to be kind of tough go anywhere, do anything watches. Actually, the DS30, since my review in the, the second generation now, actually has 200 meters of water resistance. So all of these watches have 200 meters of water resistance. Um, some have hardened cases. Uh, some actually all have a certain level of anti-magnetism. Um, so there's just a lot to offer, and I think there's a lot of crossover here. But I think also these are really good examples to give you an idea of scale and uh, proportions and how that actually affects the way a watch wears. Uh, but apart from just a random number from a measurement uh, across uh, the case. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a closer look. Okay, guys. So first, I'm going to start off with this boulder here. Because honestly, from all the pictures I've seen, all of the, the reviews, this thing just looks like a huge watch. It looks like a big, bold, you know, chunky tool watch. But the crazy thing is once I got it in hand, I actually realized it's much smaller. The scale is much more manageable. The proportions are just about perfect. They're so dialed in. I'm so impressed that I just, even before I do my full review, I did want to make sure to get this uh, featured here on this segment because I think this is a great representation of how um, kind of what you see uh, in, in pictures and videos can be very deceiving. So this is a 41 millimeter case and, and of course it has, you know, relatively short lugs, um, kind of that uh, squared, you know, to no shape, almost like a barrel shape, but just more angular and geometric and which really reflects uh, Boulder's design language overall. Um, so with that said, now when you compare it to something like, let's say this Damasco, which look at that, this is a 39 versus a 41. 
Now, it really gives you some perspective on, on proportions, right? People saw this this review, oh man, I love it, it's it's perfect, it's like the best, uh, you know, it's a great everyday watch, field watch, pilot. and pilot's watches are supposed to be big, I mean, they should be in the 40 to 42 range, I mean, 40 is, is kind of a small pilot's watch, 42, I'd say, is a little bit more standard, of course, these are, you know, originally uh, were in the 45 range, uh, when kind of the idea of a pilot's watch first came out, you know, 45, 55s even, so, um, it's more about kind of that big dial and being instantly legible, which, you know, of course, technology progresses, design progresses, and you can get really instant legibility here. And look at that. I mean, it's really a game of millimeters, guys. Uh, when when I did my Christopher Ward, you know, 40 versus the 42, even though I literally went into great length about the proportions on the 42 and, and everything, you know, how they're more balanced and... And really, the, it was designed to be a 42 millimeter watch. There's people who still chimed in. Hey, well, you know, the 40 is my sweet spot. It's just like, guys, the, <laughs> your sweet spot isn't a number. It's not based on just a number. It's not based on any just one dimension. Look at the difference just the case design does and, and the, the play here. I mean, this has no one's ever said that the DS30 they wish it was a little bit smaller. I mean, it's it's perfect. I mean, if anything, I like it better than my Zen uh, 556 size because it's slightly larger, um, but it has a much bigger dial. Uh, at 39 versus a 38 and a half, it's literally what like a quarter of a millimeter on either side. So right. So if it's if it's larger, it's not gonna be all on one side. It's just basically the different split in half. So you can see here, guys. That the dial is 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 much smaller, and which actually shrinks down, uh, you know, the watch a lot because of the way it's proportioned with the inner bezel, the outer bezel, the case shape. Although it does have wide lugs, another thing to notice is these are 20 millimeter lugs. So this isn't a 22. This isn't some big wide band. That's a 20 millimeter, right? Look, it's they're the same width in the band, guys. So just take a look at that for a second. Kind of let that marinate. Uh, let me know um, if that's helping you guys a little bit with understanding scale and, and why it's so, so important to actually get watches on your wrist because they're all going to wear very, very different. Now, to take a look at another watch that um, I'll also be reviewing very soon, um, these watches have a lot in common. I mean, on paper, these things are almost made to kind of be going head to head together. Um, you know, uh, apart from their, you know, their ethos definitely is quite similar for the watch. Uh, but I think, uh, of course, their design aesthetic is much, much different. Um, but you can see there, this the dial size. Nobody, you know, uh, on these Archimede Outdoor 41s, nobody's saying, oh man, that's just, it's just such a huge watch. It's a 41 millimeter and a 41 millimeter with a 20 millimeter lug, right? So they're, they're very comparable. They have the short lug to lugs there, um, the short overhangs, they wrap around the wrist. One just has a much larger expansive dial. So if anything, this one, the the outdoor actually looks a bit bigger and carries a little bit more visual weight. Uh, I think at least from the dial perspective, you do get, you know, of course, uh, there's more breaks here. You can see it just kind of visually because of all the extra lines that you get with uh, that kind of fill the space a little bit more. Um, but these are very similar watches meant to go everywhere, do anything, and and really just be kind of that everyday outdoor adventure watch. There's a level of anti-magnetism, of course, uh, on the Archimedes, it's a bit higher. Uh, both of them are 200 meters water resistant, uh, you know, sapphire. Uh, we actually do have a hardened Ickler case here from the Archimedes, but it's also a much more expensive watch. It's about a thousand bucks, where this is about 600. Um, you can get it on a bracelet, but of course that does bring the price up. Um, but you can get them both uh, on, on the strap. Um, honestly, I think I might even be the first one to even do a review, which is coming, a full review uh, of it on the bracelet. Everybody kind of reviews it with the leather strap option. I think there's actually some great rubber straps out there um, that will look really uh, slick on here. So uh, expect to maybe see me add uh, one of those to the video review so you can kind of get an idea of some different play uh, you can get. And I'll even probably do a head-to-head -head between these two watches at some point uh, as far as 
um, you know, that from that aesthetic, because I think, uh, you know, the answering the call of an everyday kind of modern adventurous, you know, very masculine watch, these two watches do a really great job at that. And it's so odd that they're so different, but so similar at the same time. But you can see here, guys, the, the scale difference, the, the size of that, you know, the size of the dial there, right? Because even though here you do have that step because there's that really cool kind of 3D uh, chapter ring uh, that has the indexes um, actually going vertically, as you can see there, that come down, which is a really cool use of space on the watch and it does give it some great dimension. You also have a similar step here, except it's a rotating bezel uh, that you can use for timing, which I think is really great. Um, so, you know, we'll also get these on wrists, but again, we just take a look at this. Now we have some very similar uh, dial opening. Look at that. This is a 39 versus a 41. You know, this should be, you would think that this would be a drastic difference because there actually is an Archimedes Outdoor 39, guys. This is a 39 millimeter Damasco, right? And, and there's plenty of people, oh, the 39, I love the 39. It's a perfect fit for me. This is a, it's right next to 39. Can you visually tell me that that's that much of a difference that you just know that that's the one for you just because of the number because of the measurement from the diameter of the outer portion of the case not including the crowns um so there's just so much more to it and it's if this is any indicator to let you know that the 39 probably wears a bit smaller than the 41 um I, I think that's a great way to kind of look at it there, guys. There's just been a lot of times I've reviewed watches and people jump into the comments, oh, if only this was a millimeter smaller or that. It's just like, you guys, the worst is when I hear people say this would be the perfect watch if it wasn't for those ex that extra millimeter, that extra half a millimeter, that extra two millimeters. I, again, guys, two millimeters in, a dif in difference is one millimeter on each side of the case. Right, and then there's still the proportions of the dial to the bezel. Right, this is a big open dial layout. Um, you know, it doesn't have a rotating bezel. This doesn't have a rotating bezel. It has that chapter ring, but then you have something like the boulder, and it even takes it to another level because now it has an internal rotating bezel. So that shrinks down that center dial even more, and it just fills that space. And as you focus your eye on it. I mean, if, if you can imagine that this was this inner rotating bezel was actually an outside bezel, right? On like, let's say a diver or, you know, a, another type of field watch. And uh, this was just the teeth on the grips or, or, you know, just say the blue portion of the dial and bezel. This would be like a 38 millimeter, like my, my Helsin, my 38 millimeter Helsin probably has this size dial with about that size of the of the bezel insert there it's just smaller on the outside from there right so that really plays tricks on your eyes when it comes to proportion so yeah once i once i pulled this thing out of the box i was just blown away by how the size just caught me off guard this thing is not much different than the you know what's considered a 38 slash 39 millimeter um you know, Seiko Alpinus, this is this does not dwarf it by any means. This doesn't look like some huge, big, hefty watch compared to it. It has that design aesthetic. Of course, the overbuilt, the chunkiness there, but that's its design. Its actual scale is much smaller than that. So I was just really, really impressed. And I thought it'd be something really good to talk about. But while we're here, guys, let's go ahead, get a little wrist shot action. So let's go ahead and start with uh, the boulder. And you can see I have it on this rubber strap here. I'll actually be reviewing it on this strap. Um, and also, they're uh, supplied. Um, well, it's not supplied, but it's in-house. They're, they're, uh, they have the previous generation models. Uh, canvas strap is also still available, guys. And uh, a lot of people have kind of complained about this rubber silicone strap. Um, it's a bit sticky. Um, other than that, I have no complaints. This thing is really pliable. Um, feels nice against the wrist and I think it obviously it looks great um, You know, there's a little bit, you know, of course that kind of tire tread design uh, Aesthetic, but it's definitely tying in obviously you couldn't have a slick um, unfinished 
uh, strap with all kind of all the casework that's going on here. Obviously, all the dial indications and everything. And you can see on my seven and a quarter inch wrist, you know that thing wears really, really well. It's not super overpowering, oversized. Even if I take it up here, where the lens distortion is going to make it seem, you know, much larger than it probably actually is, it still doesn't look oversized by any means. Look at the way that it sits there on the wrist. I mean, that thing. It's actually quite nice. Um, so let's actually get the Archimede here on my left wrist. I'm a lefty, so I you can notice that's why I don't have a uh, watch tan on this side. But as you can see here, guys, the 41s, they wear like a 41. You have a 41 millimeter dive watch. People love that. Oh, it's a... It's great, it's a di and the reason why is because the dial is a little bit smaller, um, generally, and the what lugs can be a little bit wider, and and that combination is very Roll S X. I mean, if you look at a Submariner, the dials are just so small, and that's what kind of tr is able to give them so much play versatility-wise. Here, you're going to be doubling down more on the versatile, on the uh, visibility, the instant legibility there. But what you have is the short lugs, right? And then you have the hooded lug at that. Everything flows. You have this beautiful taper, which actually shrinks this watch down so much, uh, which is a really nice feature. Um, and it doesn't feel oversized. You know, I put this next to, let's say, my Oris Big Crown Pro Pilot. It's a 41 millimeter watch. No one's ever told me that they wish oh man, I'd buy that if it was a little bit smaller. It's a 41 millimeter watch as well, and it doesn't have a bezel. Um, so, you know, it's just people living and dying by a couple of millimeters just always blows my mind because there's so much that's out there uh, that you could potentially be missing out on. So, as you can see, I mean, you guys have seen this DS30 on my wrist in the past. Um, lovely, lovely. Let's actually get these out of here. Um, lovely timepiece, um, fantastic, really. Um, it's and then I paired it with actually this. Before you asked, this is from Damasco. This is their textured rubber strap. So this thing is uh, going to be just as waterproof and tough. And then you even have, of course, the satinized, blasted steel uh, finished to actually go with it. Really gorgeous. You can see here similar finishes. And they're going to wear on the wrist actually pretty similarly. Here though, the visual weight, a lot of it is, is being pushed outwards uh, because of the dial. Here it's being kind of, I'd say balanced more towards the middle. And then here you're going to see again pushed a little bit more outwards. But then a little bit of pushback because of that really cool kind of 3D chapter ring that they incorporated there. So, guys. Uh, you know, of course, a big number, a lot of people ask, oh, the lug-to-lug -lug is also huge. It's a big, big, big deal. You can have a 38 millimeter watch with long lugs, like let's say the Nomos uh, Orion, and that watch is going to wear uh, a little bit large, honestly, um, because of its long lugs. Here, obviously, you know, all these are tool watch oriented, shorter lugs, wear really well. Um, you can see here... Uh, because it doesn't have hooded lugs as you have on the Archimede, um, it actually even uh, shortens that lug, you know, even more because here it's just quite angular and cut off, and then you just let the light hit it. Sometimes it'll be darker, or the shadow will hit, it'll fall off at a certain angle. You can't even see the lug anymore, and it actually visually shrinks down the watch a lot. So you know, again, I, it's just nuts that I saw these before so many times and thought, oh man, that's kind of a big watch, but it's, it's not. I mean, maybe even as I look at it through the viewfinder here on my camera, it almost seems larger than it is uh, in reality, but it, it's not. Um, so again, this, you know what, guys, I know what you want. You want to see some loom. Let's close this bad boy with some loom. All right, yeah, like I said, this little sticky here with the uh, the rubber, because uh, they're, they're rubber keepers. So maybe if they ever revise this, do something like a metal keeper or something. So, or maybe one metal, one rubber, so that they won't there won't be as much stick on the way out. Basically, kind of the uh, there's just a lot of uh, grip going through there, which can be good, right? You want it to stay on your wrist and on in place and whatnot. But you know what? I'm gonna set this up. 
for our loom okay, shop. Okay, guys, let's go ahead and get the loom off going. All right. So as you can see, uh, the nice thing is because they actually are contrasting off each other, you can really get a good idea of what these looms are like. So you can see in the center there, the green glow is that uh, C1, X1 uh, mixture. So it's gonna be very, very white uh, in daylight, but then in darkness, it's gonna glow green. Not quite C1, I'm sorry, C3 level, but uh, a nice step up, kind of somewhere in between there. And then you have on the far right, you know, all BGW9, super blue, super clean, super cool. And then on the far left, you're gonna have the boulder with the mixed loom, which I think is really cool. You can see a mixture of C3 and BGW9. So the loom looks fantastic on these watches. I think that's kind of a given for when you want that uh, really versatile, everyday kind of tool watch. Um, you're gonna, you gotta have the loom. It's just, it's part of it, right? Um, and you don't necessarily need it, you know, cause it's not like it's a diver or something, but you know what, you have to be ready. If you're ready for any situation, you gotta at least be able to see the time in the dark, right? Um, so as you can see, really, really good. I'm, I'm letting it go a little bit longer than I normally do before I bring in Mr. Low Light Transition uh, over here because what I like to do also in these segments is of course give you kind of an idea of what these watches look like transitioning in and out of uh, you know optimal lighting conditions as it were because a lot of the times all you see is the hot studio lights and it's very representative of direct sunlight but not super representative of actual lighting um, that you're gonna look at these dials at. Look at, if you look at the dial here, you can see a much blacker dial on the Damasco. Um, and then you can see a, a matte, the matte dial on the Archimede really, um, it's so flat that it absorbs it almost as a touch of charcoal to it um, versus kind of almost so black, it's a negative space on the Damasco. And then the blue of course is, you know, you can see it's not quite as vibrant as you normally would read it. It's actually a really nice tone of blue. Um, even in this level, the way it's gonna read is gonna be much brighter. But, uh, you know, the nice thing too is you can kind of get a look. You can look for imperfections, you know, in the finishing there. Uh, but you end up seeing when you have a nice uniform brushing on the bracelet, look at the Archimede. Um, you know, obviously the bead blast finish on uh, the Damasco and the boulder are just going to read very even um, and quite flat looking, but they do capture light in a really interesting and fun way. Um, you can see actually a couple of bronze hues being picked up on the DS30, the Damasco in the center. So, all right, guys, this one's ran very long. Uh, so again, big shout out and thank you to Risk Candy Watch Club for, you know, supporting the channel and, uh, you know, enabling me and, and motivating me to do also segments like this apart from my standard watch reviews where I just get to a little ramble going. So guys, let me know what you think of the comments below. Uh, you know, what's your sweet spot? Uh, I mean, for me again, I, th I wanted that 40 millimeter uh, C60 Trinet. I've been waiting for a 40 for so long. Um, and then I got it on wrist and it just wasn't as good as the 42. So, uh, it just was a little reminder. And I mean, if I could be reminded and I have like over a hundred watches and have had even more come through this, uh, studio, I mean, I, I think the average everyday guy can easily get a little bit caught up in, in the numbers game. Um, so again, it's not just about the numbers guys. It's not just about the width. It's not even just about the lug to lug. I've seen a lot of people, it's all about the lug to lug. Guys, there's this thing called proportions, right? And be, and the way that the dial, the hands, the bezels, and whether they're a fixed bezel or a rotating bezel, um, the way that those sizes and the way they play off each other and complement each other um, or accentuate certain features, um, it's big. It's a big, big deal. And, it's, and it just it plays a much different story on your wrist. You can have a watch that looks way oversized um, and it could be very small, um, you know, versus something that might look really small and is actually quite large just because the way that the proportions are playing with it, not just the scale. So with all that said, guys, 
Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you liked the video, please do a like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks, guys. Thank you.